to the Balls Not Court podcast. Cortez Paul is here. Got Kevin Carter to my right hand side, and I have Steve Van Order over Skype. Uh, Steve, Kevin, how y'all doing, gentlemen? Steve, I can go with you first. How you doing, sir? Steve's still laughing. <laughs> I'm still laughing. Oh Lord! Oh, I'm doing good. I'm off, doing good. Off air stuff, man. We can't really talk about it on there. Hold on, ready? Go ahead, hey, everyone. <laughs> Take a big deep breath. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> now breathe out. Now breathe in again. Oh, all right, I'm good. Now breathe out. Now do y'all smell it? <laughs> You're right. It's that time of year again. It is the opening of training camps and the beginning of football season. Uh, I graded that opening. By the, 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 the smell of freshly mowed grass Big sweaty men running into each other, and maybe a few cheerleaders sticking around somewhere. God, I love this time of year. <laughs> As you can tell, Kevin's very young, and um, my ball don't need to bounce. <laughs> you just want to spike the ball, right? I just, exactly. <laughs> As you can see, training camp is well; it's already in session. Uh, we're here to. You know, discuss that and everything about that, and some little quick, you know, hits and everything like that. Because we're going to dive into our season. My nipples preview. got hard. For God's <laughs> sake, we'll get to our I'm season preview uh, somewhere down the line here and everything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just start off with some quick stuff, and I'm gonna start off with Kevin because this is this is his time where he this is his baby. So I know he want to spend on this, and um, I'm gonna ask you, what are some of the objectives that you want to get out of training, Kevin, when you bring in? You know some of these, these players back for another season. Well, when you break, when you any NFL team always wants to get first thing, first and foremost, they want to get out of training camp healthy. That's your first and foremost thing. Lately, a bunch of teams hasn't been able to, including mine. We just can't seem to stay healthy. But the big objective, number one objective, especially for teams that are the younger teams and some of these ones that are viewed as up and coming teams. They need to get their rookies accumulated and get them in there fast and get them in there to work on what they need to work on and get the knowledge of the system. That's goal number one. Your veterans, they're all going to they're all going to come in, go through their routines. They've already got them down, especially with the new day, way they do training camp. It's a lot different than the older days where you had the two-a-days and everything like that. So now it's just coming in and getting the rookies accumulated to a quicker pace now because training camps will be a little bit quicker than it was that past season. Make sure all your guys stay injured and make sure your guys that if some of them come in out of shape, which nobody in the NFL right now is coming in out of shape anymore. Mm-hmm. They're coming in in shape because they got so many conditioning programs and everything like that. Just make sure you, can, you, you get them all together and get everybody gelling together, especially if you're bringing in a bunch of new players on one side of the ball or the other. You just want to get them to accumulate to each other and get everybody set. All right. Steve, what are some of the objectives you got at training camp from your perspective? <clears throat> well, again, like Kevin said, we want everybody to be healthy. We don't want to see another Dante Fowler out there blowing his knee out. We don't want to see that. We want to see healthy. We want to see these guys are flying around. I like, but for me personally, when I'm out there watching camp, I like to see if the, if the team gels. Mm-hmm. I like to see them flying around. I want to see if there's a cohesive net with, with the returning starters. And even with the young guys, I want to see how fast they can acclimate themselves with the rest of the team and uh, get in there and see what they can do. You know, I'm hearing a lot of good things already from the young guys and um, especially from uh, Ramsey, which is good news. Um, and that's Those are really the two big things I worry about. It's like, can are they uh, cohesive and in injuries? You know, it's always the first thing is you always want to work on is that so I really like to see if everybody's on the same page or not some guy who's supposed to be going running right and he runs left. You know what I mean? So that was the only real two things that I really look forward to. You know what I mean? That's those are that's it for me. I hear you. Yeah, with that you got the uh, OTAs and that kinda of get you a little step on to get your stuff you ready to go, you know, for your younger players, everything like that to get them acclimated to the uh, NFL set life. Also, you want to look at the part where this is where his time has come up. Kevin beautifully described at the beginning. But to this, you know, training camp is just the beginning, and you get this camaraderie, and you try bringing it in. Now, nonetheless, you do have these where 
you know, you play against these people at the same time, so you're going to have these battles and scruffles and everything like that. But, you know, this is where this is where the men are made from the boys here. You know, particularly this is the highest time of the year everywhere where you're at, going to be at. Especially fucking here. Especially Florida, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so your your manhood is really being tested Not in this heat. In this heat <laughs> against, like you said, bigger physical guys that are hitting against you. You're getting yelled at by the coach, so your 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 mental fortitude is being tested. Everything's being tested, and you know that's the beautiful thing about training camp because this makes a break you and show you are you ready for this type of lifestyle because it's gruesome, it's physical, but you know this is that part of the year where hey, let's get it, let's knock this out, get our things covered for we want to cover as far as our plays and everything that we want to cover, and that make like you and uh, Steve mentioned, Kevin and Steve mentioned. Make sure we walk out here injury free. And we're lucky. We're kind of lucky to be blessed to where this is my twentieth twentieth year. I've gotten to actually go and watch them practice. You not being able to go and see your team practice and everything like that, and getting an up close look at them and everything like that. People, people always. You can downgrade a city. You can do whatever. Being one of the exclusive thirty two cities that have an NFL franchise has huge miraculous benefits just for this kind of stuff alone. You get access. You, We literally get to go down there and stand as about as close as me and Cortez are right now to these guys and get to talk to them and become, you You feel it. You, you And that's that's what I enjoy because I know your next question is what, that's what I enjoy I about, an <laughs> about the training camp process is we get to go and enjoy it as Fans of this team, as a fan of this team for since the the birth mm-hmm. of this team, it it's able for me to go and be a part of it and and get to feel it. You you feel the you feel like Steve said earlier. You get to go out there and see the camaraderie, but you get to feel the camaraderie too, mm-hmm. because these guys these guys you can see it when they're laughing, talking, joke, everything like that, and you can feel it go within the fan base as well. Sort of, kind of. I know we. have We've been in the drug, but it, this is the same way it is everywhere. All these places that you get to go to, look at Green Bay. They they they, they get her the kids come out and line up at seven o'clock in the morning to get these guys to ride their bicycle. How cool is that? Down, I wish we could do it. But they don't have to ride bicycles; they just walk. But they get to ride a bicycle with, with the kid. That's pretty right. Cool. It, 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 things like that happen in every single city in the NFL that has. If you have an NFL team, that's what, or wherever they're practicing at, because some of them don't practice at their home. But it gives you that sense of feeling, and it gives you that sense of actually belonging that you get to you get to enjoy the process with them and going out there and watching it. My favorite part of going out there and watching it is every day I go, I legit focus on one guy. I try to go watch and focus on the one guy and see how he's doing. And that's always that's always what I do every every kind of day I go out there. If he's doing something different, I'll go and watch another guy that I've been having my own. So maybe during the day I go and watch two or three specific guy, and that's exactly who I look at. And it, I, I, the process is just so much fun though; it's, it's enjoyable. Yeah, about the process is like I said. Kevin's been fortunate to uh, actually go watch it, you know. So that's that's a different process from now. Um, me. Now, I play in high school level and going through the training camp process or like that where you get set up and everything like that. Now, I respect anybody that went on to play college and NFL because uh, it, this is gruesome, even in high school. I, I know they don't two, do two-a-days anymore. Nope. Um, but we, I, I They went, do half a day. Yeah. <laughs> I went through the two-a-days process where uh, it's physical demanding. Um, it was terrible. You had like I never played football. It was terrible when I was there. Oh, because I'm even older than you are. Yeah, and it it, it was a uh, it was a beating, and there was times where we come there. Why like, you think I got bad knees now? <laughs> you come there in the morning, and then guess what? You have to come there in the evening and do some walkthroughs everything like that. So uh, you would just admire that where you just put in this work here, and then and the process, like Kevin said, of brotherhood. And then the fact that, you know, you get tired of being up on each other, that when you play another team, like... You go out and nail them. Yeah, you just go out there and take it out on them. As Kevin Jazz is playing the Bucks here. Uh, yeah, this year they get that. They're doing a joint practice with uh, Tampa Bay, which should be fun. So you get to go out there and watch both teams. And, that, and that's pretty cool in itself right there. So, And that's why I say from that aspect, 
But yeah, that's how I see it from that that time of prospect. So the training camp is back. It lets you know that football is around the corner, and so it's it's a August is always a fun time here because you know it's the beginning of something else. Uh, Cortez football. likes it because I get all excited. <laughs> the him during basketball season, I think, is a smidgen of what I am during football season. Yes. He gets hyped about basketball season, but when football season comes around, my whole demeanor changes. This is Kevin's it, baby right here. It, 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 my whole demeanor changes, and I, 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 I enjoy football more than, more than anything, more than any sport. Football is that's my stuff. I like everything else, but as everybody knows, I'm a diehard Gator fan and I'm a Jaguar fan. So th- this has always been my time of year when when football comes around. Exactly. And I'm also a two-time defending <laughs> fantasy league champion. Which that's coming up soon, too. Of our, our, of our group of fans. I'm the two-time <laughs> defending champ. I, uh, what's the funny thing is my, my coworkers was asking if I was going to do their fantasy league again. And I told them I wasn't doing it. And they was like, wow. I was like, listen, I had the best record in the B League two years in a row. I get put out in the first round. You know what? It's, it's the same song. I'm not doing it. It was like, come on, we need you to play. I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm I'm, I'm retired from the John Stone Wear Group Fantasy Football League, and uh, I should be in the A Group because I dominate these other scrubs. And then there's one hot team that always I had to play against, and they put me out, and they end up losing the championship game. Well, the one year they lost in cha- the one the, the team Tammy lost in the championship game. And then Brad, who was just on fire, he he won the whole thing, maybe so. So he went on like a six-game winning streak. So Look I knew here. I was in trouble. I'm not one to pat my own back. But I was. Uh, how many games did I lose last year? Two. Two or three. I Something think like I lost two games. <sighs> and, I, and my average win margin was like 70-something points. One of them game was less than about a point when I played you. Yeah, I beat you by I beat yeah. you by point eight points. That was very very that game. But then the rest of them were just blowouts. Yeah, and then I got my rematch and I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> to to leave this to put it that way, I was like, okay, I'm going to get my revenge here. Yeah, let's let's do it. And yeah, needless to say, I wasn't ready. Cortez went with the bad strategy of playing three tight ends. Which worked for me the whole season until I played him. And the funny thing is, like I said, I played him the one time. I lost by like a point. I was like, okay, I can do this again. And Jaguars, his his players, his his personal own Jaguars took me out. Three of them. Three of them. One of them being Allen Robinson, who had a monster game that, that week. Made me cry. He had two touchdowns. Yeah. Alan Hearns had one touchdown, and Blake Bortles had four. Blake Bortles went off. All the, I, everybody went off. So, all right. Well, let's give some quick training camp. That uh, will be hits. another podcast whenever we do our yeah. our fantasy football preview get that, podcast. Get that set up here. So now's the fun time of year where I get four hundred different podcasts going just for football. <laughs> all right. Well, hey man, I know you see Eddie Lacy recently. But he, uh... You mean, you mean Slim Lacey? Yeah, Slim Lacey. Slim Lacey. I mean, they was calling him Fat Lacey. That uh, bitch will be big again by week five. <laughs> that was going to be my question. I was like, I was like this time we talk about it. Wait, so you giving it to week five? Week five, that bad boy will be big again. Man, they went into him last year, man. Remember they found the old trees of him going like the Taco Bell and he was talking about the food was delicious and stuff, stuff like that. <laughs> Listen. I'm glad that, you know, because particularly you players come in and, and have a strict diet until the offseason and try to eat properly. But, man, you get beat up so much in football that you diet, they're like, man, I ain't trying to. Look here. I've seen what some of these brothers eat. 